Chapter 12 has two objectives. So a lot of your short answer questions for all of trimester three have been based on chapter 12, this whole kinetic molecular theory, which is just, kinetic just means movement. So moving molecules, ideas about moving molecules. So what are three assumptions? Anybody remember any of the assumptions about kinetic molecular theory? What do you remember, Christina? Okay, so what about size and space, I guess? Yeah, compared to the space between them, the size of the particles is really small. While the space between particles is ginormous. So believe it or not, a lot of matter is empty space. Things can only get so close. You can never actually park part it can never pack particles you know, edge to edge, there's always some empty space between them because of those uh, intermolecular forces and like forces repelling and um, all kinds of forces going on in there. So particles are really small and especially for gases, the space between is really huge. What else? Yeah, they always move. You can spell here particles. And that's in solids. Just change it. In all states. But what state do they have the most motion in? Gases, or at least most freedom of motion. And solids have the least. They just kind of vibrate in a fixed position. That's why solids keep their shape. Okay, but particles move in all states. Maybe remember the third one? Third one's kind of the combination of the two is that um, the speed of the particles the speed of motion can change. It really depends on two things. It depends on the energy you have. And it depends on the mass of the particle. So bigger things move slower. If you give two particles the same amount of energy, the big one's going to move slower than the small one. If you heat any particle up, if you give any particle more energy, it's going to move more. This also means since the speed of motion can change, so the number of for and force of collisions will change. That's what we think of as pressure. Okay, this is why volume and pressure are always changing with temperature, because it's all about collisions, how many collisions are there and how much force is there behind the collision. Is there enough to burst that can open? Is it enough to expand the balloon? Okay. So size of particles, the amount of motion, that's all tied in with your collisions, which is also tied in with the energy, which is a direct uh, result of how much, uh, what temperature it is, or that's how we measure it, is via the temperature.